7.2, more order of operations. So we, we've seen some problems, and you may, felt, may have felt, especially towards the end of 7.2, like the problems were getting bigger. We're just going to start expanding these. Now, when we expand these, because we should be pretty familiar with all of the operations at this point, it's not that making them bigger makes the problems more difficult. It just makes them bigger, that's all. So they may take a little bit more time, it's true, but it shouldn't be uh, a deterrent. And if you're feeling comfortable about the operations, then you should not only feel comfortable, but confident going into these types of problems, no matter how big they get. So order of operations, again, it's not always PEMDAS, because multiplication or division and addition or subtraction happens from left to right. Sometimes the division's first, sometimes the subtraction's before addition. Who knows? But that changes the order of this old, what is that, an acronym, I think? PEMDAS could be PEDMAS or PEDMSMA, something like that, okay? And yeah, with this one, we may see those brackets for parentheses because it is possible to have parentheses within parentheses. And this square bracket stuff sometimes just helps to organize which parentheses should come first. As usual, just like we did on the last problem from 7.1, we're going to use the order of operations here. I do not see parentheses, though. I do see exponents, particularly that 3 to the power of 2. So that's a 2 exponent right there. 3 to the power of 2 would make that 3 times 3. Just focus on each part. Okay, Remember, that's the whole point of the order of operations, is that it breaks long or big problems up into smaller, more manageable problems. So that's 3 times 3, which is 9. And, well, I don't see any other exponents. So that means that the rest of the expression stays the same. So that would be the 6 plus 27 divided by 9 plus 3, and then multiply by what was 3 to the power of 2 is now that green 9. So that's exponents. Then I look for multiplication or division from left to right. And what do I see first? Scanning from left to right, I got this division. 27 divided by 9, which I know is 3. So that takes care of that first division, which makes this then 6 plus 3 plus 3 times 9. Here like this. Now, still on multiplication or division, because we have this 3 times 9 on the far right, 3 times 9 is 27. So now this becomes 6 plus 3 plus 27. And that concludes multiplication or division from left to right, which brings us to addition or subtraction from left to right. And there's only addition left, although there's two of them. So I would start with 6 plus 3, which is 9, then add that to my purple 27. Finally, adding these two together, my final operation addition, 9 plus 27, is... 36. And since I've found finally the one individual number that represents our original expression, this one is complete. Well, more parentheses here. I don't know that this problem is necessarily longer, but there's more parentheses at least. So that's the first thing we need to focus on is parentheses. Now when we see two sets of parentheses like we see on this problem, with the parentheses around negative 3 plus 4, and also the negative 5 plus 10. I tend to evaluate them from left to right, although sometimes I may prefer to evaluate them based on size. It, uh, it doesn't really matter which one you start with, okay? So moving from left to right means I would start with negative 3 plus 4. They're opposites, but the 4 is bigger and it's positive, which means this answer is going to be positive. In order to evaluate that, because the op operation or the signs are opposites, take the big number 4 and then subtract the smaller number 3. That would give you a total of 1. So that's positive 1. I don't really need the positive sign, though. From negative 3 plus 4. And that evaluates that first set of parentheses. Next up, we got this other set of parentheses with the negative 5 plus positive 10. The 10 is bigger and it's positive, so this answer will be positive as well. I just need to do negative 5 plus 10. So 10, really, I need to do 10 minus 5. Big number minus a small number there. That gives us 5, so that's positive 5 now inside that parentheses. And that evaluates that set of parentheses. Now looking on the outside, 
we got the 9 times that 1 plus the 3 times that 5. But that takes care of all of the parentheses that we had. I do not see any exponents in the problem. So I move directly into multiplication or division from left to right, and I see two sets of multiplication, 9 times 1 and 3 times 5. If you don't see those multiplication symbols, that's okay. Just know that if you don't see the operation, it has to be multiplication. So moving from left to right, I would start with 9 times 1, which is 9. Now, when you're getting used to this, it's possible you may benefit from showing this full expression like this with uh, 3 times 5 again. Um, and then you do 3 times 5, which is 15. Some of you knew that you could have done the 3 times 5 right there to get your 15. Either way, I mean, the answer is going to be the same no matter how many steps you show this with. Uh, so that ends up being 9 plus 15. And addition or subtraction is our final operation. Well, there's only one operation left. That's addition. So let's do it. 9 plus 15. I'm not going to worry about stacking it. That'd be 24. So that's our final answer because we've narrowed this down into one individual number. That is done. So as usual, let's go and start with our parentheses. And I only got one set of parentheses here with the 5 minus 2, which, uh, I mean, we're only taking away less than what we started out with. So that's a pretty quick subtraction problem. 5 minus 2 is 3. So that takes care of the parentheses evaluated. Let's look at the rest of this stuff. 18 divided by 3 plus that 3. But now we have an exponent of 2. And that's our next step in the order of operations is exponents, particularly with this exponent of 2. That would make that base 3, 3 times 3, which is 9. So that evaluates not only the parentheses, but the exponents, which leaves us then with 18 divided by 3, and then adding that green 9 there, which leads us into multiplication or division from left to right. Scanning this from left to right, I see this division here. That's 18 divided by 3, which is 6. So we end up with 6 plus 9. No more division or, uh, division or multiplication, which leads us then into addition or subtraction. But there's only addition. Our final operation, 6 plus 9, is 15. So that would be our final result after using this order of operations. But I'm going to reemphasize this. The order of operations breaks this problem, which... You may consider long, if you may not consider it long after we do some of the other problems, but however long it is, it always breaks these big problems up or long problems into smaller, more manageable problems, focusing on one operation at a time, which hopefully makes this solving these a little bit easier for us. And here's our first example with a set of parentheses inside another set of parentheses. So just to acknowledge which set of parentheses go with each other. And these ones are structured even differently, right? You got this square bracket here with the 10 and the other square bracket on the far end. That means it by itself is its own set of parentheses, okay? But within that set of parentheses is another set of parentheses here, right? So we would need to evaluate the parentheses inside parentheses because, as I've said before, when we look at parentheses, you look inside the parentheses and you restart the order of operations. That's why I'm looking inside this blue set of parentheses. Now within the blue set of parentheses, I do not see any exponents or other parentheses. So I move directly to this multiplication. 6 times 8 is 48. So I take 48 minus 43. You can stack it if you need to, but I'm not going to, just almost for the sake of time. 48 minus 43 is 5. Now, this was all within that red set of square brackets. What we have left over from the square brackets is the 10 plus whatever we got from blue there. So that's 10 plus 5 in blue. So narrowing down even further our square brackets, we have 10 plus 5, which is 15. But don't forget that 5 on the outside of the square brackets. And it is being multiplied because... It's not showing the operation. So that's 5 times 15. Yeah, that's our final operation is multiplication here. So we'll show the work here on the right. 15 times 5. 5 times 5 is 
uh, 25. Carry the 2. 5 times 1 is 5, but add the 2 makes that 7. 75. And that concludes this one. So here's our first problem where I see a fraction. And remember, fractions are classified with parentheses, so I need to do the fraction first. Now, when we say the fraction, what we're really talking about is the numerator and denominator. We're going to do them separately and individually. When I work with fractions like this, I tend to work horizontally this way. Where it is in the, in the past, you saw uh, it was easier to show the work downward. But on this one, with these types of problems, since we are focusing on either the numerator or denominator one at a time, I tend to work these more in the horizontal direction. So let's move these over so we have more space to work with. I tend to start also with the numerator. Do you have to start with the numerator? No, you do not. You're welcome to start with the denominator if you'd like. But I tend to start with the numerator, so that's what I'm going to do. I have two sets of parentheses, 5 plus 2, and also 22 minus 2. So, and there's only one operation between these, or inside of these. So whatever I get from those operations, I will put inside these other new sets of parentheses. So in red, I got 5 plus 2 which is 7, and then in the blue set of parentheses, 22 minus 2, skipping the stacking, gives us 20. But I can further simplify the numerator because we took care of parentheses. I don't see any exponents, but I do have the multiplication between the 7 and 20, multiplying 7 and 20. Really, I take 7 times 2 to get 14, and then tack the 0 on the end of that product. So 140 in our numerator. And that simplifies fully the numerator. What I need to do now is simplify the denominator into one individual value. So I would start the order of operations. I'd start with parentheses, but there is none in the denominator. I do have this 3 exponent, though, which I need. That would be 9 times 9 times 9. So we're going to do this one downwards. 9 times 9, we should know is 81. But then we got 81 times 9. Let's stack that. We probably don't have that down. 81 times 9, 9 times 1 is 9, 9 times 8 is 72, 729. This is the result we get from 9 to the power of 3. That's our exponent. 729 is 9 to the power of 3, but we still need to subtract the 715. So let's go and stack those. 729 minus the 715. So 9 minus 5 in the 1's place value is 4. 2 minus 1 in the 10's place value is 1. 7, 0 out. And so the difference between those two is 14. And that fully simplifies the denominator into one individual value. But then I've got the division from the actual fraction line, right? That's really 140 divided by 14. And however you look at this, it doesn't really matter. On this one, since we got a 0, from the numerator, I would know that my answer ends with a 0. And then I'd just really do 14 divided by 14, which is 1. So that'd be 10. And actually, that's our final answer there. 10. Lots of parentheses on this one, no problem. A couple different set of parentheses on this one. Let's look at each one individually. So I would look at uh, the 6 minus 4. And for me, again, I, I scan from left to right, so I would probably do this one first. But I want to acknowledge the other ones that we have here, okay? So, for example, we have this square bracket here, which is a set of parentheses. But within that set of square brackets is another set of parentheses. So when I get to the square brackets in orange, I will need to do this order of operations again inside, which means that we would start with parentheses, or that blue set of parentheses within it, okay? Now, I'll get there. And like I said, sometimes I'll, I'll, when I'm doing this on my own, I, I may start with the bigger set of parentheses, but it's not required that you do bigger or smaller first, as long as you do them, okay? So I would start with 6 minus 4 here, because I know that 6 minus 4 is 2. Now, I know there's that exponent of 2. Don't forget that that's there, because it is smaller, and it does happen from time to time where students just... Not that they don't know how to do it, it's just that they forget that it's there, okay? 
So I've evaluated that first set of red parentheses. Now I will look at the orange set of square bracket parentheses, which within it has a blue set of parentheses. That's 3 plus 5 there, which is 8. No other operations in there. It's just the one operation. That's what we have. Then we have 8 to the power of 3 divided by that blue 8. So for me, I would say, look at this exponent stuff. And that would be 8 times 8 times 8. I know some of you at this point would take a shortcut, but I'm not going to because we may not have noticed it. Just sticking with the order of operations, I would do 8 times 8 here, which is 64. And then multiply it by that 8. Let's do the work over here. 64 times 8. 8 times 4 is 32. Carry the 3. 8 times 6 is 48. But add the 3 makes that 51. So that's 512 within our orange set of brackets. Bracket parentheses. So that's 512 divided by the 8 in parentheses. It doesn't have to be in parentheses, but you can keep it there if you'd like. I am just because... It'll help us to understand where it came from, right? So now we would have 512 divided by 18. And this result will give us the square bracket parentheses simplified. So let's go ahead and do this long division over here, 512. I know not everyone needs it, but let's pretend like we do. 512 divided by 8. Well, 8 doesn't go into 5, but it will go into 51. 6 times. 6 times 8 is 48. Subtract the bar from the 5. 11 minus 8 is 3. The 4 is 0 out. That makes that 32. 8 goes into 32. 4 times. Subtract the 32, and that zeroes out. So, 512 divided by 18 is 64. That quotient we had. But looking at the rest of this problem, now that we've evaluated that, remember that originally that red... 2 in parentheses was to the power of 2 multiplied by that orange set of parentheses brackets. So that's 2 to the power of 2 multiplied there. Moving it down even further, because that simplified it even further, that's 2 to the power of 2 times, really, 64. You don't have to use the square brackets at this point if you don't want to. I'm going to keep them just so we know where it came from, though, okay? But that evaluates all of the parentheses. Which leads us then, again, to an exponent. This exponent of 2, that would be 2 times 2, which is 4. Now I have 4 times, I'll lose the brackets just for the sake of space. And finally, we have the multiplication between 4 and 64. Let's go and do that multiplication. 64 times 4, 4 times 4 is 16, carry the 1. 4 times 6 is 24, but add the 1, makes that 25. So... Final answer here, 256. Here we have a bigger problem, and yeah, we got a set of parentheses. It, it may have been obsolete here because this was a, a, a fraction as well. But let's go ahead and take a minute and try this one as well. Uh, take one and try this one on. Your, take one minute and try this one on your own, then we'll go over it. Okay. And I think this is a good problem for us to test our metal. So starting with parentheses, and yeah, that yeah, we may not need that parentheses so much. I mean, I'll go ahead and copy this parentheses here and just kind of set it aside so that I don't have to focus on anything else. And that is the power of using order of operations, by the way. I don't really need the parentheses. We can keep them there if we want, but I would focus once again on just the numerator. 115 plus 5, just if you're going to work here, would make that 120 from the addition. That completes the numerator. Then in the denominator, we got 4 times 2, which would be 8. Now that's 120 divided by 8. I'm going to need some long division to do this one. 120 divided by 8, and whatever I get will be the, uh, whatever needs to be in the parentheses. So 8 won't go into 1, but it will go into 12 once. 1 times 8 is 8. Subtract at uh, 12 minus 8 is 4. Drop to 0 make that 40. 8 goes into 45 times, and that zeroes out to 40. So nothing remaining. And, yeah, there's a good time to correct that. So, yeah, we got 15 from that set of parentheses. So there it is, that 15. Now, 
we'll go back and evaluate the rest of this stuff. So 2 to the power of 3 plus that red 15, now divide by 5, and minus 8 right there. Next up, we got the exponents, which is I got the 2 to the power of 3, 2 times 2 times 2, so there's 2 times 2 is 4, times that last 2 is 8. Now it's 8 plus 15. This is going to be much better. 15 divided by 5 minus 8. And that completes all of the exponents. But then we got multiplication or division from left to right. And yeah, we got the division here. 15 divided by 5 is 3. Now I've got that green 8 plus, all I have is purple 3 minus that last 8 right there. And moving into addition or subtraction from left to right, I got 8 plus 3, which is 11. Minus the final 8 there in black. I know it's a little smaller, but I kind of ran out of space. 11 minus 8 is 3. There we go. That's our final answer.